What is up guys, give me the video game scientist from VG Bootcamp here and I have a new video. I've seen a lot of Steve clips of people getting hit with this one particular setup. Ah! On FD, this starts insta-killing fast fallers around 40, medium fallers around 50, and slow fallers around 60. Like Krom and Ike's up B, it has a meteor mechanic attached to it so it kills before they actually touch the blossom. The problem with this setup is that it's cheese. It's a gimmick. You can just tech the block. So I really need you guys to stop posting these clips on Twitter. In fact, if I see another post like this, oh. Real quick before we get started, I noticed that most of y'all watching my vids aren't subscribed. If you really like my content, consider subscribing. Thanks. In this video, I'm gonna explain why what I just showed you works and also how to use it against Steve. So ceiling teching is an interesting mechanic that I thought I'd never have to cover in a video. Normally, the only time you have to do this on a tournament legal stage is when you're under it trying to recover. Unlike grounded teching, which gives you four options, Ceiling teching is one single animation. You have no other choice except to do a no tech. And in this setup, that's not a great idea because it kills mad early. I tested ceiling teching on Fox, Joker, Puff, and Donkey Kong and got pretty much the same frame data on all of them. So it's pretty much universal. When most characters ceiling tech, they go through 17 frames of involve. Then they go through eight frames of vulnerability. And then they can act. It's important to note that they can drift left and right during their vulnerability frames. If you have a block with three spots up, this gives Steve a 15 frame advantage after back throwing if they tech the block. This combos into a lot of things. Jab, forward nair, backward nair, walk forward up tilt, dash attack, down tilt if they're close enough or not too floaty, dash up smash, down smash if they're close enough or aren't too floaty, forward smash, and you can spike with fair if you space it correctly. This basically means if they're a back throw block kill percent and you back throw them over the ledge into a block, they'll die if they don't tech, and if they do tech you can punish them hard. And if your weapons are upgraded you punish them even harder, and even if your combo doesn't kill them, you can set up for edge guard and try to secure the kill. This setup is particularly interesting over the stage. For most characters, they land on the ground almost immediately after the animation is over. But even weirder, the game won't let them directional air dodge. They just go right into the ground. Point is, for many characters, they have to double jump if they don't want to land right in front of you. Some characters don't have this problem though. Regardless, you have 15 or so frames to punish just like off the ledge. It's guaranteed. That being said, if you're playing against Steve and they go for the setup on stage, you might as well just take the hit. Something really important about a setup like this is that wall techs are not the same as ceiling techs. If you buffer a move afterwards, it will immediately come out. And in many cases, Steve can actually be punished while still in the throw animation. So if you're going for the setup, you gotta make sure the spacing is right. And as I pointed out at the beginning of the video, this can also be used against Steve himself. Oh, and by the way, you can do this out of other stuff too, not just throws, so it goes pretty deep. That's the video. If you like it, consider giving it a like. If you really like it, consider subscribing. And if you really, really like it, consider turning on those notifications. I'm busy, I got stuff to do, so it's back to the lab with me. I'll see you guys next time.